Well, hey everybody. Um, this is a video I've been looking forward to, and I know some of you guys have been too. Um, but we, we've had about three days of constant rain. If you look at the clouds, it's been hazy, um, raining. And today is the last day. Uh, we had two days of rain. Everything got flooded. Um, not necessarily flooded, but there was puddles everywhere and stuff like that in the driveway. And, and uh, we, it was the most rain that we've gotten for the year. And uh, it's pretty good because it's been kind of dry. Uh, but we, we've gotten it all at once, and it's supposed to rain for the next two days. So we've got about four or five days of straight rain. And I didn't know what to expect in the garden. I know these guys aren't used to it. Um, some of the stuff might be doing great. Some of the stuff might not so much. Um, you know. The beans over here by the corn are pretty much non-existent. Well, the plant itself, the leaves and everything are. Um, but uh, this is the culprit right here. This little guy right here, but you can see the rattlesnake pole beans. They got that purple stripe going on. You guys can see that. So the plants are still alive. I mean, the beans are still growing, um, but there's not a lot of foliage. And the red sweet corn starting to get get little ears on it. It actually has red red tassels. And here is the Galapagos Island tomato patch right here. And you can see that pumpkin vine separating the basil. The basil has actually been doing better since the pumpkin's been here. Um, it's more full. It's more thick. And this is lemon basil. This is that Thai lemon basil. And I've already used a bunch of this stuff. We made some homemade pizzas and stuff. I've frozen a whole bunch. Um... It is some of the best smelling, tasting basil you can get. But anyways, the whole point of the video. I have noticed a couple tomatoes in here. Now, I promise to keep you guys all posted. So, if you can see right there, there they are. There's two little yellow Galapagos Island tomatoes. And I'm going to eat one. I haven't had these guys for about two years now. It'll be two years since I got to try a Galapagos Island tomato. So, let's give it a try. But yeah, this whole little cluster right here is going to be ready pretty soon. Oh, I'll take the most ripe one. Alright, that's about how big the Galapagos Island tomatoes are. Perfect size cherry tomato. Wow, that's even bigger than when I grew them on my porch. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Super sweet. Not very acidic. Um, they have their own flavor, you know that? I mean, you can try as many cherry tomatoes that you want to. Um, and they're, everything's going to be a little bit different, especially if you grow it yourself or if you do some weird varieties like this. But, um, oh my gosh, I can't even explain it. Wow. I'll save that one for my wife. Wow. Now, they're not fully ripe. As these guys get a little bit more um, mature, more ripe, they start to get like a, a brown speckle, like a, like a dark orange marble on the outside. So, so that's one way I know that these guys aren't ready. Um, not just yet, I'd probably say a couple, a couple more days, maybe once the sun kind of comes out and dries up all this rain and everything. But yeah, guys, that's it. That's Galapagos Island tomatoes. And these are just the first ones. There's probably a couple thousand in here, a couple hundred at least. Um, I know one plant can produce a lot, but yeah. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to share with you guys. And, um, it's a different variety of cucumber that I've been growing. 
but hasn't really started maturing. I actually didn't start getting cucumbers on it until, actually, I just first, now it's the first time I realized it. So let's go take a look at those. All right, and here's the big old cucumber patch. Um, there's amaranth, the red sweet corn, and then these are the plants I've been harvesting, the big green cucumbers, the space master, or the, uh, the bush master cucumbers, space master bush cucumbers, sorry. Um, these are all in front. Now what I did is I did four rows and uh, planted Space Master bush cucumbers here. Um, either lemon or white cucumbers here. I think they're lemon cucumbers over on this side. And there was two rows of leeks in the middle. Well the leeks haven't done anything but as you can see the cucumbers it actually worked out perfect because they just gave the cucumbers more space to grow in between and they've completely taken over. They've completely filled in. So that, uh, that that's okay. But and then there's some poke weed in here, and that stuff's edible too, but you got to paraboil it. Um, it is considered to be toxic and poisonous, and the berries are toxic, but it's a southern staple. I mean, everybody down in the south um, call it poke salad, and you boil it three or four times and change the water, and apparently it's some of the best stuff you can get, but um, I'll probably end up pulling these guys out before they, they get berries on them. But, um, but looking down in here... These are the lemon cucumbers, and hopefully I can find them again. There they are. There's one of them. There's actually two of them right there. Ooh. Some slime on it. I just got it on my finger. But yeah, check it out. lemon cucumbers now I'm growing a bunch of the white ones also too the little, those little miniature white cucumbers and I have them over there by the other squash um, over near where the sunflowers are and stuff um, but yeah that's pretty cool this is the first one of these I've gotten I've gotten dozens and dozens of the Space Master bush cucumbers already um, before this one's put on its first fruit so I mean, yeah, the, it's kind of a delicacy, but, you know, uh, it's kind of nice to have something. You know what, the, very, the, the diversity is where it's at. You know, if you've got some cucumbers that will give you something early in the season, and you've got some that will give you something kind of late also, too, a little bit something different, you know, that's always good. You don't want to just kind of focus on one cucumber or one spe specific plant or anything. You know, I've got summer squash and zucchini. I've probably got three different types of corn. Um, I've got three different types of watermelons and, um, try to, I'm just trying, really trying to experiment a little bit and see what does the best. And, you know, we might have a year this year that's really wet or a year that's really dry and certain things might like that more than others. So, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> Let's get that other one. Oh, it's a little guy. There we go. So yeah, here's these lemon cucumbers, guys. I know John Kohler, he raves about them. Um, so let's give them a try and see how they taste. I'm sure they're going to be awesome. And I guess the, the older you let them get, like in a couple weeks, they'll start turning yellow like a cucumber, or like a, like a lemon. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, Galapagos on the tomatoes are doing awesome. I definitely recommend it if you have poor soil or you want to try a different type of tomato, you know, kind of get bored of the same thing after so long. And I mean, look at these plants. They've just completely taken over. Oh, I just zoomed in for you. Zoom out. But I mean, that whole area right there is just, just tomatoes. I've got my other tomatoes over here in cages, my pineapple tomatoes. And I actually have cucumbers growing up the cages. And uh, actually, you know what? I'm not just going to talk about it. I'll show you guys. I think I've got some little tomatoes in it. Whoa, I almost just slipped in the mud. Whew. All right. All right. Now, here's my pineapple tomatoes. I mean, these are a big, normal stem tomato with uh, big old flowers on them. And the cucumbers, I don't know if you can see this or not, there's a cucumber vine right there growing up in my tomato cage. Uh, they don't 
don't seem to bother it too much, so hey, why not? But here's a bunch of the tomatoes I've got on here already. And these are called pineapple tomatoes. Never grown them before, but I wanted a good big slice and variety that, um, that I've probably never tried before. And uh, I mean, I like Mr. Stripey, but I've grown it a couple years in a row and figured I'd try these guys. There's one, there's a couple more little guys right there. But yeah, the cucumbers are growing up into the tomato cages, which is pretty cool. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. You all have a good one.